Hello, my name is Al Walid Al Khaja. I'm uh, with Creative Commons uh, Qatar, and I work for the National Library here. So there are many benefits for open GLAM. Um, the first thing is that it increases the impact of um, um, GLAM in general. Um, you know, if, if we look at what happened in the last two years with uh, the pandemic and working remotely, I think that shows the importance of that not everybody has access to physical content. And this was the case when we all had to work remotely, but it's this applies, the same principle applies to content from, from different GLAMs. And I believe that there should be more information available online. We live in an age that wants to consume media, whether it's excessive or not. People want to consume information. And simply looking at social media, for example, there's a growing nostalgia to days of the past. And if you look at GLAM, they have these information available to them. Um, and by making them open, by making them available online, it increases the impact, but also uh, meets a need of the public. Um, I also have to say it's not only about access because reuse is important. So whenever we talk about open, we need to mention the reuse element. And then there's a great value in content from GAM not only being used for, let's say, education research purposes, which is perhaps the expected use case, or even beyond, um, let's say, publishing in its classical model. But also with GLAM, we need to be looking at, or the content from GLAM, we need to be looking at more creative and commercial projects, such as fashion industry, the arts, or even graphic design. So I believe that there's a lot of opportunity, there's a lot of need, and by having them online, uh, GLAM can achieve those objectives. There are barriers to having an open GLAM. And from my perspective, at least, um, one of the biggest issues, and we see this in the region, um, is that we have a lot of content. We have a lot of um, material. Now, beyond the, the, the obstacle of digitization, which is also a problem, the biggest obstacle is copyright. So there's a lack of information that will allow us to determine whether an item is in the public domain or not. Unfortunately, outside the EU, there are no kind of, at least to my knowledge, there are no uh, orphan legislation available. So we don't have orphan works. And that makes it difficult for us to kind of choose or put something online. Um, there are also issues with institutions claiming copyright over a digitized public domain. Um, that's a big obstacle for making content online that is really open. Um, beyond kind of, let's say, uh, and open in the sense that it is also available for commercial use, et cetera. I think one of the issues that we have with uh, opening up GLAM is the balancing of commercial interests with public needs. So institutions need to think, of course, they're always thinking about sustainability. They're always thinking about how to not necessarily be making profit, but at least um, covering the cost. And there's always this issue with, uh, like balancing commercial interests of an entity and its public needs. And we see this uh, not, uh, not necessarily in the region, but around the, around the globe. The last obstacle or barrier to open GLAM is sensitivity uh, issues. So uh, GLAM, I need to kind of think about um, whether the content, or by putting the content online, making it open, it, um, it causes any issues from a sensitivity perspective. Now, one of the things that I say opened my eyes and mind about Open Glam is actually maybe anecdotal, and it's to do with person uh, I've met here in the library who talked to me about how they've accessed the, the repository that we have and found information related to their family. Now, that got me interested, and I actually went and searched for my family name, and I did find actually some content related to who I believe might be an uncle of my uh, um, grandfather. Um, so, you know, just that kind of feeling of connecting with information that I didn't even know exist or information that could have been lost through generations. That um, for me is the essence of having um, open content um, online. <laughs> I think GLAM can be open. 
And there are, of course, institutions who are uh, hesitant to open up their collections. But I believe that once, let's say, organizational issues, such as digitization and um, organizing the metadata and the, the copyright issues, making sure that the public domain and you know, agreeing on whether they make commercial use or not, and the, you know, aligning of commercial interests. In the end, what GLAMS will see is that once they open up their collection, they're actually going back to their reason of existence, their missions or their goals, which were to enrich knowledge and, and, and enrich knowledge and culture and cultivate, let's say, a sense of wonder. An open collection increases their impact and allows them to achieve those very goals. <laughs>